Well, we'll call the call this meeting, our legislative committee, to order. I'd like to welcome everyone this evening, and um, I certainly appreciate the television audience being here with us. <laughs> so anyway, hope you find this informative. Um, our sign-in sheet is circulating. If anyone out there needs to sign in, please do so. And um, first thing on the agenda is um, Daniel has sent out the minutes from our last meeting, and he also had an attachment which updated um, and made some comments on our um, last rules and regulations document changes. So do I hear a motion to... Approved and dispensed with the reading of the minutes of the last meeting. Motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Bolden and second by Mr. Hennessy. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, the last, so our goal tonight is to move forward with this, but we do have to clean up. Uh, at least three items from our last discussion. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm going to just begin with what my research has been, and of course if anybody else has something to for each point, um, please go ahead and bring it on in, okay? Um, <clears throat> so the very, the very first one, where we were in rule... Okay. I want to suggest that, I don't know how y'all are doing this, but every time you get an update, updated document, let that be your latest document, okay? So take your other document and put it away so that you are always working with our current working copy. Okay, and rule number four, um, there was some questions about that was, uh, that was presented to us about disability and being, having to have allow more time to speak if, at, at a session. And I want to add a number three um, that um, after where every person has the four minute limit per occasion and if for the second time every board member has had the chance to speak, then you also could have another four minute session to make a comment. But we've also added the line, any member with a disability or speech problem will be allowed an extended period of time. Period. You wanting to add that? Mm -hmm. But we also need to clarify what we think an extended period of time is, too. I mean, you know, that could go on for 20 minutes. I just, I feel like that, that when we are we're going to be presented what the disability is, and then you can maybe ex you can maybe decide that at that time the chairman can. And but every disability can be different, and you may not be able to put all that into it. I, the extended period of time would really be up to the chairman to determine. Let's take about a person who just has um, a, a speech problem. And then they person may be able to get it out in three or four extra minutes. A person who can't even speak and has to have an interpreter, that could take even longer. I think every situation is going to be unique, and I just feel like that's, that's why I said, actually, I, the advice was given to me that we should, we should mm -hmm. stick with extended periods of time. As determined by the chair? Mm -hmm. okay. Who gave you that advice? Mr. Charles Curtis. Read that, say that again, how you wanted the word done. Well, it didn't have to be exactly like this, but it was, um, any member with a disability or speech problem will be allowed an extended period of time. I, don't, I think you just leave the uh, speech problem off and put disability. It's fine. Hmm. Some people have speech problems until they get mad and then they speak clearer. Hmm. Like autistic people? Is that what you're referring to? I'm just saying people. I'm not referring to anyone in particular. I'm just saying that I've seen people that had speech problems, but when they got excited, they didn't have any trouble getting it out quickly. So just put disability. Because if you're you're thinking so hard, what does it spit it out? Because I can see you're just your wheels are turning. I don't think disability and speech problem is the same thing. 
it's, it's a disability. I was I was kind of well, I was thinking two things. Firstly, I was thinking that Carl was pretty much saying what I was thinking on that end. But then, firstly, I'd say uh, I'm kind of second kind of what Robert said as far as you know some kind of way capturing a on a reasonable recommendation on a time limit on it. I mean, I I don't know. I mean, you could. I mean. You you want to you want each, each situation you're going to have to determine it. I just yeah. he strongly suggested we do not put a time limit. Yeah. Well, if you put extended period of time, I mean, it, it, maybe you just maybe the chairperson would just say um, we'll give you adequate time to make yeah. your point. Yeah. And then if the chairperson sees that that person is reiterating and going back over the same thing or whatever. You know, multiple times they could say. Well, you could just say they will be allowed extended time to communicate there. Per the discretion of the chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then he could stop it that if it started good. being a lot of repetition. Yeah. That'd be simple. That sounds good. All right. Okay. Yeah. Agree, agree. Everybody agree on that? Yeah. By any member with a disability <coughs> shall be allowed to speak for an extended time frame per the permission of the chair. Discretion. The, the discretion of the chair. Okay. We that put was, that, you put extent. You put that extended, was a number. Right? It was in rule time. number four at the, the very end. at the end of item number three. Speaking. Under speaking. But you know, also too, when we 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 had already said before, if a person couldn't stand or, or raise their arms, if they didn't have arms, you know. They were disabled. We were going to accommodate disabilities. Wait. Yeah, I don't think you have to spell everything out. No. I think common sense has to come into play every now and then. Okay. Um, Maybe any, I'm wrong anything else on that that request that came to us <clears throat> last time? Okay. The next one we talked about was in rule number four. It was number five. five. Point of order. And Robert. Hennessy here has some things he wanted to present on that too, and um, so he will let him go first. And there was a couple of things I, I found on that too. I want to make this very brief. And uh, during the discussion prior to the starting of the meeting, uh, Daniel and I spoke about this, and, and I just referenced this actually to the Roberts Rule of Order. I'm going to read this because it's very brief. It's just, uh, but in Roberts Rules of Order, newly revised, that uh, point of order may be raised if uh, rules appear to have been broken. Uh, this interpret a speaker during debate interrupt excuse me a speaker during debate or anything else in the breach of the rules warrants it the point is resolved before business continues the point of order calls upon the chair to make a ruling the chair may rule on the point of order or submit it to the judgment of the assembly if the chair accepts the point of order it is to be ruled well taken if not, it is said to be ruled not well taken. And this is coming directly out of Robert's Rules of Order. Um, generally, a point of order must be raised at the time the rules are broken, or else it would be too late. For example, if a motion was made and discussion began, began on it, it, should, it would be too late to raise a point of order that the motion has was not second. This is pretty interesting. If such a motion was adopted without a second, it remains valid, and not having a second becomes irrelevant. So if business at hand was done without a second and it passes, well, it's still, you know, seconding a motion wasn't relevant, so it's, it passes. Exceptions to the rule that a point of order must be raised at the time of violation include point of order may be raised at any time a motion was ado adopted in violation of the bylaws. Uh, now, if you're, you know, putting forth a motion and it's contradicting the bylaws, uh, or applicable law in conflict with the previously adopted motion unless adopted by the vote to rescind it or in violation or fundamental principle of parliamentary law. Uh, the ruling of the chair may be appealed to the assembly in most cases, a majority vote against the chair ruling is required to overturn it. So, I mean, it has to be a two-thirds. I, I guess that would be, no, majority wouldn't have to be. A point of order is sometimes erroneously used to uh, present a request for information or a parliamentary inquiry. If a member asks such a question, the chair should treat the question as an appropriate request. And that's pretty much everything that's in the Roberts Rules order pertaining to point of order. Um, 
I want to. I just wanted to bring this to everyone's attention, and that's really a lot to digest. But um, it's it's there. And then my point being, if an individual throughout the assembly calls point of order, that that person should declare the reason for the point of order. And I'm going to turn it back over to Carlene because she did have discussion with uh, Charles Curtis about that particular subject. And that's all I have on the point of order. Go ahead and, <coughs> Carlene, I'll turn it back over to you for discussion with Mr. Curtis. Well, he said with the codes as well as Robert's Rules of Order that all chairmen should state what the point of order is. What, why it was raised. It should be clearly stated so there's no question because it does allow the membership if they want to appeal appeal his decision. But to be clear, you could make you could write the statement in there that this, when a point of order is um, raised that the chairman will address and state what the, what is the point of concern to be stated and then the ruling will be made. Can add that line into it. So, I mean, he just thinks that since we've had these questions, we should be addressing them and that we should be as thorough as we can on giving the answer. So, all of that that Robert has just read could be added into what we're saying, or we could reference it um, and just add that sentence. When you've got here, when the point of order has been decided by the chairperson, um, he will state the reason for the point of order and the, me and the member having the floor can proceed, and you could put in parentheses that particular thing. Yeah, reference to this. Reference. Uh, and, we, and it should be an attachment. Mm -hmm. we, should have, we should print our attachments to our document for On training the back, purposes. For the back, yeah. Yep, for training purposes. And then when we ever we assemble this, uh, the total package, then we could just have footnotes and reference points to go back to that. Which, you know, there'd be a master, but. Um, are y'all good? Are you, is everybody good with that? Or you could just and leave that, state the purpose of the, and then put the, when the, point of order has been decided by the chairperson, the member having the floor can proceed subject to this decision made and then put that attachment on there and just leave leave the wording as is. There's, I mean. Except we want to add the state that the chairman needs to state with a point. Well, you don't have to. You don't have to put that in there. If you put that per in there, it says that he would state the purpose. I mean, you can. Either no, way. it doesn't. It doesn't either. really say it. It doesn't. It implies it. Yep. And you would think that anyone who was running a meeting with this kind of it's, detail. It's not a big deal either way. It's just the more words you throw in there, the more confused something somebody's got to remember. But if, if I want a point of order, I think I'm going to say why I want the point of order when I make the point of order. That's you. But, you know, I'm I, just saying as a, I, I thought it was a courtesy to the person that you were calling point of order to. I mean, just to explain to them. Just like it wasn't irrelevant, or the time, you know, time would be a typical scenario of that. But that, I mean, that was a big. All you gotta do is just add that into that sentence. Yeah, don't just you think? yeah. Okay. Um, is everybody good with that? Adding that in there to the sentence about the chairman, and then adding a reference to the point of order as of written in Robert's Rules of Order. What is that, that? document? What is it? Not a reference. You, do you follow that, Daniel? Okay. If you'll hand that down there to him. Yep. Um, I think it's. Take out your page. Or? Yeah, it's uh, Robert 2011, page 253, if I'm not mistaken. Robert 2011, page uh, 253. Right. 2011, page, page 253. You have it there? I don't know. I haven't got this book memorized. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're wanting you got a little sticker. You got you're a little wanting it to stay. Just when the point of order has been decided by the chairperson, parentheses, per Roberts, two, 2011 edition, page 253. Or well, do you, you, can, actually you can do the whole, when the point of order has been decided by the chairperson and the reason uh, for a point of order stated, 
the member having the floor can proceed subject to the decision made per and then the reference. I don't know exactly how you would word that to make it, but you see, what, well, like you need to add that into the sentence right. that the statement of why the uh, point of order was made, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it just, I mean, that won't take that much time. And, it, and what you just said, the last part of what you just said is actually in that Robert's rule order paragraph that I read. So that we could just tip, we could just specifically cite the author of the book, um, you know, comma, year, and just cite it in parentheses mm -hmm. after that. And then we could list, you know, if we, I mean, if we needed to, we could list it as an addendum at the very end of the document on anything we referenced and just right. treat it like we're, you know, we're referencing a source like we would in any type of project. And if you do that, that, that makes it easier. People don't have to go through that book and find oh, it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> We've already so got a couple already. Chairperson states the ruling of the point of order, maybe? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That was the only thing that really I thought needed to be changed and then reference to Robert's Rules of Order, page 253, point of order, if they want to get more clarification. Sure? <laughs> well, 253 here is not about that one. Oh, it's not? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I. In this book, sorry. But okay. um, I don't know if that's. And this was the latest edition, but. Um, if we're gonna, is that what it says on, the, on top of that one, 250? Well, no, it doesn't say anything on the top of it. It just says it on the back page as far as reference goes. It doesn't. But, you know, I, just, I, I took this off the Internet, and so what you have there is what we need to go by. Um, I've got one. We'll, we'll find it. <clears throat> 11th edition, that's what you have. Mm -hmm. 249. I'll let you look. Okay. For me. Is everybody good with that change? Okay. Um, while he's looking, looking for that, we'll talk about the next one. I believe once I update that and re-look at it, it will make more sense. Okay. Uh, the other, other one that we had when we got down to the whole section on, um, you know, we made, maybe made changes in Rule 6, and then when we got to Rule 7, was all about elections and appointments of um, commissions, positions, contracts and so I, what I have for you in front of you um, is there's two lists here this is a list of the county legislative body appointments this is everything that is brought to our legislative body that we vote on okay um, and that's those. And beside each one of them is the Tennessee code that it, that references that we that we do that. The other one is the county mayor or county executive appointments. There are 54, 53 of these, but if you'll notice, um, several of them have have an asterisk. And if it has an asterisk, it is an appointment that requires confirmation of that county legislative body. Okay? And, so, and then the copy that I gave Daniel down there has several copies of the codes attached to it because this would, this would be an attachment to rule number seven. So there wouldn't be any questions about what our county, who our county mayor can just completely hire and fire and do what on his own or what he has to bring forth to the board. Now, if you remember clearly, it stated that, let's say it like in a department head, our county executive can take applications, interview, um, qualify, 
check references, do all that, and comes and there's certain certain of these, and will come with a recommendation, and then that's when the board would either accept or not. So, since when we were when we were what happened is when we were going through this, we were kind of wondering which ones were which. So, I got I got this for us as a attachment, so we would have a list of, of what they would be. So it really wouldn't change our wording that's in rule number seven. It would just clarify what those appointments are. Now, there is a difference in the definition of the word confirm and elect. Right. Okay? So, we have to be careful. We get, you know, to follow the rules, we have to be careful when a person does make, when, you, when, when, when the election is, is taken by vote of a person is being confirmed or being elected. Is that clear this up for you? I'd say on a confirmation, there's no, uh, as far as um, there is, um, there's no interview. You either vote yes or no. Right. You know what I'm saying? When, when that, that's all done prior, prior. to bringing. And when they come out there, I mean, they may make a, introduce themselves, make a small introduction if that's what they want to do or whatever. But uh, on a confirmation, you either yes or no. And if it's if it's approved, there's nothing else. And then if it's it's not approved, then the county executive goes back to the drawing board. Well, here is one. If I was looking through this, there there's been you know, there's been some things that we've done in the past over the years that you know when you don't have an HR department and it. It just it, they weren't followed exactly according to the Tennessee code. However, they were confirmed later on. It was it was the steps that were taken, and that one of them was um, number twenty one with the county county legislative body appointments. Number twenty one. See that one with the judicial commissioners. Yeah. They are they are voted on. They're confirmed later on. But it was it was already after the fact. And they had even, most of them already start working before they even got to that point. But that's how, that's how it's been done for 20 years, so. You're saying they were, I, I thought they didn't work until they sworn in. Mm -mm. They start the training process before that. Before they're sworn in. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a confirmation, you know, and, and. Yeah, but the, this is a. Appointment, though. I know. <laughs> so, well, it, anyway, these are the list, and this would be the new rules. So we would have to follow these. So they don't need to start training to their opponent. You would think not. Until you actually yeah, why would them. you invest in training somebody if they wouldn't appoint them? Somebody might have a... What if they say, no, I don't want that person, you know, and then here you've already hired them. Trained them. Drug tested them, background checked them, got got their cell phones, you know, all the Well, the back, I, that, some of that stuff would probably be part, part of the process of the interview, though, wouldn't you think? Depends on how, well, a background check for a judicial commissioner is more extensive than a background check for a... Right. But wouldn't you think that would be something you'd do before you'd ever even nominate that person? You, if in a normal, a lot of HR departments have that as a set up as a procedure, but it's not, it's not been standard policy. So they appoint them and then they do the background check? Yes. But they don't go to work until the background check is done. I don't guess it matters really either way, but you don't have that investment if they're not appointed. It's just it's one of these things that we do need to tighten up a little bit, I think. Well, we appoint the uh, insurance committee, too. I don't know that I've ever heard of the insurance committee. 
<laughs> and we'd have to look that code up. It, might, it may be this. <laughs> Um, there's a there's several, several of these committees on here we don't even have. We may not have some of these committees. Well, we certainly don't have a Chickasaw Basin Authority, you know. So <coughs> they've written. Uh, it says <coughs> it says that we'll appoint the beer board, but that's part of a uh, safety committee. Safety and beer board is part of the committee that's nominated, you know. I guess we do in a way do that when we confirm that committee, I guess. <coughs> Do you, you want to just go ahead and move on then and just let this be an attachment or do you want to revisit every, do you want to revisit no, one, to two, three, and four? No, I don't think so. I think you just put that on as attachment to where you have a reference to who does what. Mm -hmm. If there's a question about who does what, it's like the library board. I think in the past it's always been, nominations been thrown out there and it was just confirmed, wasn't it? Yes. But it has to. It can only. It has to be done by the legislative by the commission, not by. But it's not anybody. been done that way. I don't think is it. Mm -hmm. No. No. But it's one of them that's not a major issue. I wouldn't think. But still, <coughs> it needs to be changed the way it's been done. Mm -hmm. So, huh. what can, what committee would do that? The which, which one? The library board. Yeah. Well, policy and personnel. The library board falls under policy and personnel. Yes, it does. Because they approve that budget every year. And the, the library board recommendation for someone to fill that position and would come from that board. Would come from they would come and they would tell our commissioners who they think would be the best person to <coughs> serve on that committee, that board. These need to be divided up to what committees they go come through, like uh, County Ag, Ag Extension Committee. That would probably come through Agriculture and Economics. Well, the codes would pop. Don't you think the code would tell you where they come from? Sure. Yeah. Um, does it state in these for the mayor's appointments, if rejected, does he supply another candidate it, it said he yes. could call for he a second vote it. it said he could call for a second vote and if that vote was rejected that he had to bring forth another candidate is that correct I believe that's correct he does state that in here because we're going to use this as an attachment yeah. I don't know if it states it in here but I read it that it states it in that code of the responsibilities of uh, if a, if a recommendation is denied by the full commission is it on the back of this here mm -hmm. well it's on the back of two of them there were so many pages, I only printed, I only printed one, two sets of that. I read it in the Tennessee Codes thing, is where I read it, but I don't know if it states it on any of our well, stuff yet. That's a, these are Tennessee Codes that are attached to this list, so that you can, um, there's right. about five of them that pertained really to us. Is it in that part of that? Mm -hmm. But we need to it. Uh, Carlene, on, <laughs> under county mayor appointments on number three, um, now we have that listed, what you have on number three on county mayor appointments, but on that code, and, and this may be something that uh, just by you having the code, which you do have it there listed, that you've got it referenced that there's no need for us to make an adjustment in, but that code does say that, like we were talking about uh, earlier with uh, elected and uh, confirmed, but it does say that those individuals uh, would be subject to confirmation by the county legislative body. Yeah. And so, Does it um, say if they're not confirmed? Uh, the legislative body shall not seek or interview, but well, no, it doesn't say, it just goes into the interview stuff that we talked about before. It, has, it doesn't specify if they're not confirmed what action directly is or is not taken. There is another section that states that if a, uh, if, a if it's not confirmed, then at that very, at that time, the county mayor can give you another suggestion that can be accepted or he can recess 
and bring it back up at the next kind of commission meeting with his next candidate. I think he said he could immediately call for a re a revote or something. Or an op, or an, an or after a recess can, come from, can yeah. come from the floor on some of these. Yeah. I can't remember where I found that at though. I read that exactly what you said. But I will I will say that. What this says, and what I interpreted in the newspaper that Lisa wrote, was different from for the IDB board. Because my understanding is that when he makes the recommendations for his nominations for the industrial development board, which are which are listed on this list, okay, that's number nine, the industrial development board, which is the county legislative body appointments. If, if they are rejected from by the commission, that he has to come back with another candidate. But according, I, 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 think I don't think the uh, but this code doesn't say that. It says the committee elects the IDB board. It doesn't say that. County mayor appoints him. I know. That's why I'm saying that what's said in the newspaper and what's said here is different. So we're going to have to get clarification on that one. What, what did it say in the paper? Um, it said that the mayor would be presenting his nomination. His nominations. She was just saying. What, she was just repeating what she was told, right? Um, he can. He can. I, I guess he it can was. Make um, a it was a comment from our attorney that she, she had referenced in there, wasn't it, Lisa? Yeah, it said during the policy and personnel. So, but actually, the county, the, the legislative body, the whole 24 commissioners actually nominate and appoint that. Correct? According, according to this, this. According to this piece of paper, yes. Yes. But according to, um, I, I just wanted to bring that one up to according to Mr. Bratcher, which I, I wanted to call him tomorrow and tell him that I have discovered this and that I want to make sure that, that we get that clarification because... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That could be that could become an issue. It's be relevant. We don't, we well, this here will be the this here will be what you go <coughs> well, by. This is later on down the road, but as what he has recommended to us is that we continue to follow as oh, we yeah. have been for the past twenty years. But um, somebody could bring this up. I see what but you're saying. As our attorney, he's going to. We're finding things that we're doing, and we're not finding them quick enough to get it fixed before we go to the <laughs> middle of the year. I see what you're saying. Well, if uh, we had all of the ten nominations, he said he had ten applications for the thing. Yes, and he's only going. So if he would just present all ten, then we'd have all ten to go through. We'd know who the ten people was that was interested in being part of it, right? And then we could make a more educated decision at that point. Instead of just the two that he that's, decides that's to share with. That's later on down the road because that's not how it's been done. Yeah, but if he's got 10 applications, he should share them with us. We can ask him to. Well, you know, that's not a bad idea, but in the same token, uh, it takes if time you to have interview, the interview. vetting process. Well, he's done interviewed them, and he's done showed us who he thinks the two right. ones is, and he can make that recommendation. But if we know who all 10 are, we know who's, you know, now, I'm not disagreeing with you. You could give them each, each two minutes a piece to tell why they want to be on it like we did last time. Didn't we have like five or six last time? And they all spoke yeah. about two minutes a piece? Yeah. Sounds like I remember. That's 20 minutes. Long. That's 20 minutes, and then you make a 24 people make, a, make an educated decision instead of just going by what one person's recommendation is. Although that recommendation has been studied and you know what well, I mean. That's what I'm saying. I mean there's been time vested in, in researching and, and getting the applicants for these <laughs> candidates. There's there's a lot of stock in that, but you know, for us to be able to make a a two minute uh, presentation decision, you know, with a limited period of time as important as what that is to the community. That's, I, I feel like it's doing a little bit of an injustice to that, but I, I agree with well, you. you. Got, I mean, if yeah. there's other candidates, we got eight more people are. that's interested. At least know who they are. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. With <clears> you. I, I, I just wonder, and, and, and maybe someone can clarify that's served for a while, but I just can't help but wonder 
how can I, and I'm just going to use myself for an example, how can I be expected to make an informed decision that I am making about a candidate recommended to me if I find out a name of a candidate five to six to seven a day, days or whatever before a meeting, and I don't even know who said candidate is. I mean, how can I really make an informed decision about if I'm voting for that candidate or not? I'm just that's just a question I'm posing right now. Well that if I'm pretty now, much what it's, I said. it's um there's this called um, trust and respect and education, experience. Um, our county executive has worked with the IDB board for years and years and years in different different aspects, and he would he's definitely qualified to to make a recommendation based on evaluating these applications, checking references, talking to other members on the board of the IDB board, and who he feels would be the best fit, you know, for what our current needs are, and our number one of our number one needs right now is the workforce. Um, you know, developing that, that people cannot find workers. So... How do, how do you know that? How do I know that? Uh, but that's... I think you can ask anyone in the industries and stuff. They're having yes. trouble finding help. Every... Well, the IDB board publishes that, and also being involved in the Chamber of Commerce, I do hear the reports on it, and every single industry here has been making comments about that and that's, that's actually all statewide. even common labor even common laborers are hard to come by hire somebody to try to hire somebody to come in build your house or remodel or something it's really hard to find plumbers you know, but electricians we hired an accounting truck executive drivers. to make these kinds of decisions and, and do this work <clears throat> so if, if that if that's not being done and you find examples of poor work then when the next election you will find someone else to do that Oh, uh, I, I, I do just want to clarify, Carl, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, go ahead. You're fine. Um, I just do want to clarify. I, 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 my intention was to just pose that question. Mm -hmm. um, that has no bearing on any kind of disrespect on the county executive or anyone involved. I'm just posing the question. I mean, well, if, he, if, I, if, I'm, if, you know, if, if I truly want to know who I'm voting for, then... If we were doing it this way... We would have all 10 applications. We would have gone to through <clears throat> 10 sets of interviews. We would have done all the paperwork, and you would be informed as a commission to make a decision. Exactly. Instead, now we're, the way it is being done, yeah. we are confirming his recommendation. Right. So it's from this list to this list is what I, I am understanding is what's going to happen with us next Monday night. But in the future... If we go by these two documents here, it's got to be the way where you can make an informed decision. It's got to be by the way that we should be doing it. Correct. I'm going to agree with you. Here's the thing. Right. What we're tasked to do is to get this in order mm -hmm. as quickly as we can and, and as, as good as we can. And then we go through it. And then after about a year, we go in and fix where we messed up. But right now... We still have the fallback plan on, just like the committees that we recommended last month. We still have the fallback on. You can still nominate somebody from the floor if you feel like you know somebody's more qualified. So that you know what I'm saying. Monday night. Oh, as far as yeah, I but mean, they said, is there anyone else? Does anyone else have any nominations? If you feel like you know someone's more qualified, you can bring that up. That's kind of the fallback on mm -hmm. to keep it. Just like the committees. Yeah, just like the committees. So exactly. that's the best we can do right now until we get this squared away. Right. So we just do the best we can right now. So that should, does that answer your, that's your point you were making? <laughs> Not really. You're right. You can't, you, you can't say, yes, this is the one I think is the very best. Instead, you're endorsing, I'm going to accept your, your recommendation and we're going to go with what your recommendation. Now, exactly. lots, of, lots of times since we've been on this commission and men you've been on it longer than they have so i'll use us we have voted on the recommendation of a committee because we trusted that committee more than once so you have to do that sometimes oh you absolutely have to that's the committee system 
you know, because you can't be at everyone, you can't see everything, so you have to trust the committee. So that, that's similar to what we're doing, and you still have the, the fail safe of, okay, I want to nominate so and so because I think they're more qualified than the two you've presented. But if I knew the other eight applicants, I might know them personally, or I might know something about them and say, oh, they would, really would be good at that job, you know. That would give me a little more look at the 10 people, see the two he picked, and go, yeah, you know, I agree, or I don't know, you know. Gives you a little more something to think about, correct? Oh, absolutely. And you know eight more people that are interested in doing that job. I just, I just wanted to point that out to you, that I knew that. But we're not here to fix that problem. No, no. I just, I just, I two-minute interview is not appropriate. Do what? Two-minute interview is not appropriate. No, not at this But nevertheless, if we knew who they were, you know, it'd be a little bit. All right, so on Rule 7, I'm just going to put a little side note for the attachments, for appointments, correct? Right? Yes, I would think we probably should add on them, like a number five that add a number five well add we've got to add in here <clears throat> that the county legislative body it is responsible for appointments and the county mayor is responsible for appointments both of these lists are attached uh, along with the codes oh you're talking about just putting something on there to, to uh, reference uh, reference this attachment yes Right, number five. Or per, now, on number or three, TCA I've got a note code. TCA code 56106, section C. That's the one we just discussed. Okay, though, yeah. that was the one we just That's wanted to That's the one I All right. Well, we could reference to the TCA codes regarding county mayor appointments and or legislative body appointments. That would be pretty simple. Catch everything. Right, on number five? Yeah. Yeah. Reference. Per Per TCA codes, county mayor, mayor appointment slash county legislative body appointments. Reference to. So the county mayor and legislative body has appointments assigned by TCA reference mm -hmm. list. Yeah, you might want to put county executive instead of county mayor. I mean, yeah, everybody knows yeah, what we're talking yeah. about, but we call it right. an executive now instead of the mayor. It used to be county mayor, but it's county executive now. County Commission. You you will call it County Commission or County Legislative. It does not matter. All lines split as well. Right. It really is. Commission. Yeah, that's that was easy enough. <laughs> Do you have those in PDF? Pardon? You have these in PDF? Kinda. <laughs> I um. One little hurdle there. I don't. I don't. I just have them in email. I don't. Yeah, I think they're PDF. I'll, I'll just forward that to you. Oh, yes. Okay. I'll forward that to you, and then if that doesn't work, we'll get it. Get which, whatever it is that you need, we'll get it. Um, okay. Rule number eight. Y'all ready to move forward? Yes. Ready. <laughs> That's okay. what my note says, ready. Okay. <laughs> um, this is just about appointing committees. And that's the, that's the list of committees that we have, the standing committees, and, um, but it not, does not include the financial management committee, okay, and, some, and certain boards. Um, okay, it just says, the chairperson shall at the July meeting appoint a nominating committee from the membership of the board. It shall be the duty of this nominating committee to recommend board members for appointment to the standing committees of the board. The committee shall make its report and recommendations to the full board at the September meeting. However, members of the board may make committee nominations from the floor. All standing committees shall be elected annually at the regular, regular September meeting. That's got to be a typo. Well. Yeah, it's regular, L A R. It says <laughs> regulate. Regulate. It's a, it's a regular. Mine says regular. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the old one. That's the old one. Right. Okay. This one's where we announced from the Betty Word. It's going to 
Yeah, yeah I never have printed it off, but I will. Oh, thanks, Ron. <laughs> I still try to, I got to forward it to mine to get it printed off. Mm. That's why I asked you if you had an extra copy the other day, or what I have to. I'll get it. What is okay, what, what's required by law at this, by law, is that we do this every September. Right. And every September they are reviewed and reconfirmed. Um, you can vote on them individually, you can do it different ways, and we could write all those steps out if we'd like. But what's required by law is that it's done every September. It, it, I don't I don't think it's, you need to write all that out. It to get more confusing. It's pretty plain right here if you if you stay with this. But we had talked about switching the dates and stuff around because Daniel brought up about, you know, the election could change it every four years. It could change that. And then you're... Does the TCA code say in September you do it? Yes, but, so. but it doesn't say you have to have a nominating committee. <clears throat> so you don't even have you don't have to do that. Period. You can take the recommendations from your chairperson. You can take recommendations from the county executive. You can take recommendations from a nominating committee. Um, so it's it's up to us how we do it. Well, not all of our committees are standing committees, anyways, are they? Mm -hmm. There is some of them that there's like four or five, I believe. Has there all? Well, you're, I mean, about as far as the election goes, but prior, I mean, for example, will there be a nominating committee assembled this year for next for September? Next year, yes. In Has that been the case before? Mm -mm. Never. No, it's never been the case. Um, and the chairperson? No, has it's never been the case, but when the, they wrote this original one, apparently somebody felt like it was a better idea. But they didn't do it. But well, apparently they didn't get it passed, no. Mm -hmm. But now what does Cook for, what, what does Putnam County do on that? They've got what virtually, is, it's 21D if you've got that document, what, page 15, 15, I'm sorry. It, I mean, it, it basically states what our rule states. It elaborates a little bit, but, but overall it's a similar same, statement. Same language. So they do do yeah. a nominating committee. It's at the top of page 15. I mean, when I had talked to Charlie, um, obviously he recommended it, or in his opinion, he thought it was a good idea. <clears throat> Request letters of application or any other process that deems appropriate to evaluate potential candidates for such vacancies. So, after, if the election changed it, you would have to make some. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, just because a person was elected, say somebody, I was elected for one committee and then I didn't get reelected, and just because somebody beat me in the race doesn't mean they'd be qual oh, qualified for yeah. a particular committee. <laughs> so that's what has happened in the past when someone was replaced, they would just put that person in the every who, you know. Oh, and they're like if somebody passed vacancy. away, if somebody passed away, ever who filled that vacancy would automatically go, go in into those That's committees. That's a very good point. It yeah. seems to me that it should be in the month of August. If we were going to do a nominating committee, that it, we'd do it in August after the election, and then you would know who's going to be there, and you can. That makes sense. Then you would well, do it in the September meeting, sense. and it would never, well, you would never overlap. Well, some That's counties good. do nominating committee three years out of the four. The new chairperson nominates the election year. I've seen that on a few counties. The new chair creates their own committees for one year, nominating does three after that. Okay, but there could be a new chair every year. Correct. So every year it could be. No, well, he's talking about the, on the election year, though. He, yeah. He's talking about the election year. The It'd be a specific year. The election approach. election year, the chair would appoint, and then you would avoid, you know, because he could do it in August after the election. <laughs> right? I've seen it in two counties so far. Do you know how they have their bylaws worded or anything? Yeah, it's hard to find stuff online. I mean, this is the most detailed I've seen. What county? 
I want to say around Williamson or out that way. Nashville. Yeah. But like I said, Putnam County, I don't even believe is under the 81 Act. Some, some, They're of these, not. some of these counties are. So, I mean, some of them are trying to follow these rules a little bit differently than, say, Putnam because they're under a different act. Okay, this word chairperson here, that could be that could be the county executive if he was the chair, chairperson of the commission. If we have a nominating committee, I, I think that the county executive should be on the committee. I don't see a problem. Because he has, or she, would have the most knowledge of what goes on in all these committees mm -hmm. instead of the chairperson, if the chairperson is not the same person as the county executive. And that, the person who has the most knowledgeable what goes on in the committees and the job that different commissioners do would have the most um, experience and the best recommendations of who would do the best job. Well, that being said, you know, one of the other things that, through the Policy and Personnel Committee, which are all the chairs of all the standing committees. Um, no, that's called something else. What's that called? Um, the chairman of every committee is called Procedures and Rules Committee. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. I knew there was a P. <laughs> That's who they are, the Procedures and Rules Committee. Well, I don't know that that wouldn't be the best committee to be in the nominating committee myself. I mean, honestly, when you think about the chair of every standing committee uh, assembled would know their committee and the structure of the committee better than any other person, you know, serving on that committee, don't you think? I mean, does that make <clears throat> sense? I see what you're saying, yeah. How many serve on there? I mean, serve on the. It, 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 it's it's only certain committees. Yep. It's not a. Yep. Is there. I can tell you. Seven? Wait a minute. I can tell you. Chairman of each committee is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 people. 11. It'd just be 10. Individual. Just be 10, right? Because the financial committee, committee wouldn't count. Okay. Financial management wouldn't count, so it'll be 10. It'll be 10. And then the county executive would be Would be 11. 11 people. 11 people to be on the nominating committee. Well, that's got almost half that's of everybody involved. Thinking. Yep. So I don't see how you could... No matter how it goes about doing it, it has to go to the whole commission. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. If you've got 11 of them already involved, I don't see how anybody could object to it. Yeah, it's just the cost of having another meeting with that many commissioners. Well, a nominating committee would not be a cost. There would be no. It would be one of the. It would be one congratulations. Of those, you're on. You're a chairman of a committee. This is something. That, you get that's to not do. a committee that would be that meeting would, on a regular basis. And that would get have paid. To okay. Be paid for. So. It would be and they could actually hash that out pretty easily <clears throat> in one night when you got half the people involved. Right. Well, you think so. Yeah. Because each committee is going to kind of know, and they're going to say, yeah, you know, I think this person and this person feels like he wants to be in. Because I've heard people say, I'd, I'd rather be on a certain committee and somebody else, and they're going to know that. I think Robert's got a good idea. That those 10 and then the county executive, and he could put his input in. That way you wouldn't have to develop another committee. Just... Or... I guess you would have to have it. Named. And you know, having that having that in August, if you had it a certain time in August, and then they, and and then so the election year wouldn't matter. You could do the same thing every year, and you would even be doing it with a new executive if you had a new county executive elected, right? He would be involved in it, right? And and of course, you wouldn't be changing these committees every year because that that would not make sense, right? Well, then you'll know who's involved, but you can do it. Seven days after the election, you know, or you can pick a date in August and they can go. <clears throat> you could make it because it's not going to come up to the third week in September. You could make it the third or right after or the, the August, August the, meeting. The August meeting. Mm -hmm. August. Right after that, and then because they, they'll have three weeks to think about who got elected and, and stuff, right? 
may not have them chairs though. Well, that's possible too on that election year. Well, could make an exclusion for the election year. You're supposed to let this figure out. <laughs> well, I thought I did. So <laughs> you're saying ten of those chairs could be voted out? Correct. Yeah, they it, wouldn't be it, you could. It could. It could. Yeah. yeah. Typically, that committee meets what during budget season just to go over nonprofits usually. Mm -hmm. So typically, three out of the four years they can do that the same night, but the election year is the issue. Well, you, you could, could take just, the. You could just say the members of the. It, Existing. You could still use the people because they're still in office until the 1st of September. They could still meet in August. They could still do it. Mm -hmm. Even though they're going out, it's kind of like lame duck. But then you can change it from the floor by nominations if you don't like the way they've done it, right? Yeah, but you still have to introduce the new candidates to their committee. Right, but you would have people that had been doing that chair for a, a year that would have the insight. Right. And they could make. There's a good chance you're going to have at least five out of the eleven that will still be there. You're thinking a big turnover again, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just thinking that. <laughs> but anyway, you're right. I mean, you're going to have the majority is probably going to return. So. And if the county executive stays the same, you know. He, then you'll have him. He will be. You know, he will have his recommendation, and then that nominating committee can. They can work on it together and then he, take it to the full commission in September. He can still make the and, and like I say though, when you come into that election year, you still have the fallback on if people doesn't like if, if there were several that are leaving the county commission that's on this committee and you don't particularly care for their recommendations, you can make nominations from the floor the full from the floor and the full body can mm -hmm. make the nominations and then you still got a democracy, right? Well, that, I mean, that's going to happen regardless. Right. No matter what you so You still have that privilege. I still think, I think you can run with that. We can do it a year and find out how it works. You know? Right? And then we can come back and go, well, that was a bad idea. That just or, seems like a big committee to make those recommendations. That's a lot of input. Well, the county executive is going to come to that meeting with his recommendations, and then they will be able to change it all up and around and either accept it and that work be done there But you have each committee represented, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have each committee represented that way. Instead of having six particular people rec or five recommending uh, for all ten committees or eleven, or 11 committees, there's 11 committees, but there'll be just ten represented. Right. You'll have all ten there representing each committee instead of just having half of them. Which which five are you going to pick, or are you just going to pick nominations? For I think, I think the ten, even though it is a large number of people to make a decision, I think the ten try that first and see if it works. Because those ten, then you automatically already have your nominating committee. You autom you know who that co nominating committee is. Have you? You don't have to elect them. Daniel, have you had any commissioner come up to you and and say what they recommend? For number eight. How about you, Joseph? Only discussions I've had about it has been with Charlie Curtis. And again, I would just default back to what I said earlier, which was he said it was a good idea. To have uh, makes, committee. It's a, you know, basically just to reiterate what he said, he thought it was a good idea. He thought that it makes the process extremely more transparent. Obviously, you got more people, so you got more opinions. Uh, that's good. That way we can, when we, we're meeting together, we as in commissioners and the commission full um, are sitting in a room. We've got 11, would you say 10 or 11 commissioners? Then we, yeah. you know, you have 10 or 11 people sitting and you, you know, if I don't agree with the next person, well, maybe it's good that I see their viewpoint and it helps me to adjust my own, you know, so you, you have a lot of people making decisions together. It I also like says Carl that you can commit letters, you can commit letters to that committee <clears throat> prior to that of why you want to be on a certain committee, if you have a committee you really want to be on, and then that, that they can read those letters too. It, it, that's uh, what it said in. Uh, <coughs> may interview, hold public hearings, review letters of recommendation. So you can, you could like, say there's one committee you really want to be on, Carlene, you could write a letter and 
and, and say, I really want to be on this committee, and, and why? Except for Putnam County. Yes, it is. Well, you said that wasn't ours, was it? No, no, it's not. No, ours is just one paragraph. Which the board must ratify. <clears throat> the nominating committee may, may only make recommendations to approve or not approve county executive appointments, which the board must ratify. That's not it. Where was it at? The committee may interview, hold public hearings, review letters of recommendation, request letters of application, or any other process it deems appropriate to evaluate potential candidates for such vacancies. That's talking about when it's going to replace someone that's a vacancy. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's totally different. Um, Not that it would be a bad idea you can still if somebody if wanted, wanted to, to be on a particular yeah. committee because they had a, a skill set that they thought would be I think valuable. people's going to relate that in conversation and stuff as you go through those, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be carried in for... For the, the election year would be the only year that it's going to be a little different. <clears throat> but that would be an opportunity. And those people that say you got eight new people coming in or ten new people coming in, they could always just interview those people and find out what their interests were or what their background was. You know, if you got a background in education, you're more likely to want to be on the education committee than someone that doesn't. Or if, you, if you're... Whatever. Qualified to be on budget committee, and then right. instead of the airport commission. Right. So, <laughs> so nevertheless. <laughs> you like the, um, do you do you see a problem with having the the ten chairs? I don't. Well, we need to get busy on the language then. I mean, because that's at least we could if we can get get through that. I mean, if so, nobody has a has any reason not to be in the nominating committee. You're saying you're good with that. What do you think, Daniel? I mean, I've seen counties that have it, so I mean, I don't see why not, but like I said, it's hard to clarify which counties are under which acts, why they do that. That's well, the problem I find. We, we can always come back and uh, and change it if it doesn't work very smoothly after the... Well, it has to go through two reviews before it goes to the county commission to be looked at and... Well, first yeah. thing you got to do is is know who the yeah. the nominating committee consists of. Mm -hmm. Well, that's easy. The nominating committee will will consist of the county executive and the ten chairpersons or chairpersons, because there might be a person that's chairing two committees. That's true. But it's not likely. No, no, you can only be the chair of one, one committee. Correct. You no, can only be chairperson of one. You can be multiple chairs. We don't have a room on that. The commission does it. It's a good time to look into that. I agree. Along with secretary. <laughs> <laughs> well, we actually only have one person that is the chair of two. Carly. Carly. Yeah, we need to get that rule fixed. <laughs> if I can tell you right now. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. All right, well, let's, let's, let's fix this. All ready? Let's work on the language. <clears throat> Miss Chair. Because, I, you know, I... You don't like it? It's not that I don't like it. I think it's a, it's a time-consuming thing. It takes more time, but we're not really we're spending any money on it, so we're not wasting any money. Mm -hmm. We're just, but I think our, um, but it's a, it's still got to go to the full commission anyway. So it does, and, and you be, still have the nominations from the floor. People, people are going to be more prepared. They're not going to be surprised at the last minute. The but you have more. The election's going to be over, and you'll have, you'll. If you did it in August after the election, and we put the committees together and then worked on it, and because that stuff is done anyway, it's worked on behind the scenes. You know? I, I, I think one of the biggest positives that could come out of what we're talking about with the nominating committee is just further emphasis on second. And I think 
you correct me if I'm wrong, I think you said this a moment ago, the, was is it the first or about skill sets. Yeah, and, and their interests. And, 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 and I, I don't know, again, I would stand corrected by, by someone yeah, that well, served longer, but, first Thursday, and you know that that's always yeah. been okay, emphasized okay. with the committees, and I think it would be a good idea to look at individuals' backgrounds and then be placed to where they have skills accordingly. Uh, that would only assist and help each committee if you had skills that would help the committee. Like, for example, I'll use myself as an example. <clears throat> you know, if you had a committee called the Automotive Committee, <laughs> then I would be the last person you would want on that committee because I have absolutely no idea how to do anything with a vehicle other than the basic essentials. Again, I'm just using that as an example, whereas you may have someone like Carl referenced with uh, someone that has a background in education and that person may be well suited to be on the education committee versus someone else who has another skill set. I think that like the discussion that could come out of that uh, as a group and then during the group process could only be positive myself. Mm -hmm. That's just the way I'm looking at it. <clears throat> okay. Good. The, the election is, is the second or is the first Tuesday of every August, right? I think so. I think it's the first Tuesday, and then November is the first Thursday. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. So you would, would you, because of the election, you could have it any time in August, any other year, but would you want to set the meeting for the uh, third Tuesday of August to give people a couple of weeks to see who got elected and, and whatnot yeah, and kind of take it in? Let the chairperson announce the nominating committee at the August commission meeting, mm -hmm. and that will consist of the county executive and the chairman of the existing... Exactly. Existing ex chair, ex whatever person of... What's that committee called? Again? No, you wouldn't have to use that committee as a reference. Or would you? Well, actually, you could, and then you wouldn't have to say all the committees. You could just say, and the members of the, what you say, personnel? Like, Procedures and Rules Committee. Procedures and Rules Committee, which is the chair of each committee. Mm -hmm. of, of last year's, well, last year's <laughs> committee. And if you're still on, the, if you're still in the commission, then you're, then you're on this committee. Right. If not, then it won't, might not be ten people. It could be six or five or eleven. That's or true. Seven. Okay. Well, and then and it shall be the duty of this nominating committee to recommend board members for appointment to the standing committees of the board. This committee shall make its report and recommendations to the full board at the September meeting. Um, instead of saying this, well, okay, that's okay, but somebody's going to have to be, have, have make the presentation. However, members of the board may make committee nominations from the floor. All standing committees shall be elected annually at the regular September meeting. Yeah, well, they'll be announced and then... You'll go out in the docket and... Exactly, it'd be out before. It would be but at least a week ahead of time and then... Mm -hmm. He'll he announced at the ready. August meeting and then you need to... Do you need to set a time for them to do it like the third Tuesday or the fourth Tuesday of August or something? I think so. And then have a specific time that they meet or a Monday or whatever. About the fourth Monday in August. That's fine. The fourth month. So I give them a week after the mm -hmm. meeting to... That they'll meet and then they'll work on it and at least be ready because they'll have to do it within two weeks so that it's ready to go out in the docket. Mm -hmm. Fourth Monday of August. The nominated committee, which consists of county executive and members of the procedure and rules committee. Procedure and rules. Procedure and rules committee. Did you get that, Daniel? Working on it. That is the chairperson. That's also who does that's that's who does the uh, nonprofits, correct? Right. <coughs> we'll meet the what? When will they meet? Fourth Monday of August.
Um, you did change July to August too, didn't you, Daniel? Uh, On the beginning, the chairperson show at the August meeting. We shouldn't even be using that line, should we? Mm -mm. I said announce the nominating committee from to the membership of the. Shall announce the nominating committee, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which will be. Cause, cause it You're right, because it's already been appointed. Mm -hmm. We're announcing it. We're announce. That they will be meeting with that task on the fourth Monday. Um, because it's already to recommend been recommended to the board members for the appointment of the standing committees of the board. Do you want to include this part in here about letters of recommendation and all that stuff, or just not worry about that? Okay. I think you let that committee figure out how they want to, you know, because it's you got to let them think about something. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, are you good, Daniel? I believe so. Is everybody else okay with that one? What have you got? The only question I have is if you have a newly elected commissioner <clears throat> and they feel, A, unless they've done their homework, they don't really understand what the, the committee's structure is. And if they feel like they would be a valuable asset for any particular committee because of their background and experience, I mean, how are you going to generate that information to the nominating committee? Well, they would just have to request them to come and. and they can certainly them. attend the meeting. It's open, but at the same time, a, a county executive, when he gets his new mm -hmm. commissioners, he should be communicating with them already right. and, and saying, you know, we're going to be putting our committees together. Do you have any interest? Um, well, as long as that's uh, transparent and it's clear, and yeah. you know that that's known, because I mean we we didn't have a clue, you know, as to the procedure. But <coughs> of course, you learn a lot. <laughs> we didn't have rules. Well, that's true. We had that's not been followed, so uh -huh. at least we're starting something. Okay. Too. Okay. Are you anything else on that one? Um, what time is it? It's quarter after seven. Okay, you want to go to number nine? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now, in the past meetings, we've made motions and clarified things, but tonight we haven't because it really, we're, we're not having to take it anywhere yet. We're going to have to make a motion at the end of, bye, thank you for coming at the end of this to, um, Accepted it. Except the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Is that good with yep. everybody? <laughs> well, in the meantime, I mean, once you clean all this up and it's back out there in print, we can look at it in our next meeting. We can make it if we need to have further discussion on that after it's. On rule eight or nine? <coughs> eight. Uh, well, all the above that we've changed, I guess. Okay, well, go through rule, rule number nine. Special appropriation request. Request for special appropriation. Request for appropriations in addition to those within the annual budget shall be submitted in the following manner. The request shall be submitted in writing into the appropriate committee of the board and shall reflect the estimated costs that shall be attached to the proposed resolution. The appropriate committee will forward the request to the Budget and Finance Committee for review and input. Number two, all requests for appropriations falling in this area shall be summarized and submitted in writing to each member of the board at least seven days prior to the regular or called meeting. Such requests is to be submitted. Five, six, seven, okay. Um, okay, well, let's stop right there for a second. Right now, the docket goes out on Monday which is five, is exactly seven days before the meeting, but before it should go in, it, it should be before that so that it can be 
prepared to be on that docket. I, only, I think the agenda would just came out today. I know, but that's seven days. <clears throat> yeah. For the meeting, because it's Monday through Friday, Saturday, right. Sunday, that's then right. the meeting. It's today, Monday, yeah. Okay. That wouldn't, that's not enough time. Let's change that to 10 days. If you're making an appropriation that's not in the budget for an expenditure, you should be working on this before seven days anyway. Don't you think? Ten days? I would say ten. Um, that's thought. Move on to three. The Budget and Finance Committee shall, in open meeting of the board, assume one of the following positions. Adoption recommended, rejection recommended, or submitted to the board without <coughs> recommendation. The Budget and Finance Committee chairman or a member designated by them shall advise the board as to fund availability before a vote is taken on appropriations in any amount which are in addition to those of the annual budget. The resolution requesting such appropriations shall be voted upon by membership of the board as provided by Rule 6 of these rules. I don't see anything wrong with any of that. Or anything needs to be changed to y'all? So, in essence, it's, it's not in the budget. It's a lot, not a line item in the budget. Um, additional finances for that request would have to be either a line item transfer of funds in a surplus account. Is that how that's generally worked? Pulled out of the fund. Mm -hmm. yeah, or just general fund? Account, yeah. But see, also, I think this was before the financial management. Or I, somewhere, if if you're if you're changing line items around, it has to go to financial management. If you're not, if you're asking for additional funding, it doesn't have to go to financial management. So, and this is addition addition to those within the annual budget. Mm -hmm. This isn't tr transfers. So I think this is right. You agree? I think so. And the, I thought about the ten days, and I thought, well, that, but that would be on Friday, yeah. instead of on Monday. So they're not they're not going to have anything on Saturday and Sunday pop up that they need to throw in there Monday anyway. So, so they should be able to get that out. Yeah, Friday. It, but according to the schedule now, they're meeting on Friday to to review to set the docket to go out on Monday. Oh. According well, that ten day. days makes them put it out on Friday. Yeah, well, or at least meet on it. Well, that's another thing. Budget and Finance Committee is going to be meeting on this and review it and have their input. I mean, it would have to pass Budget and Finance before it would even come to the board for a full. Yes, but Budget and Finance can meet within that 10 days. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes they've even met 30 minutes prior to a meeting to, to get something done. For the hell, yes. You know, because it was a situation. last minute type thing. <clears throat> so. Yeah, they, they've added it on the met 30 minutes before and stuff. That's right. Well, let's leave number nine like it is and then... But you the want to change the seven days yeah, to ten. Yeah, the seven to ten. Is that okay? Yeah. It doesn't bother me. It's only going to bother the people that have to get it out that three days earlier. <laughs> that could be useful. Um... Okay, number oh, 10 is sus suspending the rules. <laughs> Any rule or rules may be suspended by a two-thirds majority vote of the members present. Self-explanatory. That is the rules. Right. Okay. right. Exactly. If, 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 if before we meet again we find out that one of them just not working, we can change it, you know, or if suspend it. Past, past, yes, yeah. yes. If if we get to something and somebody brings it up and we find out that that wasn't as good as we thought it was, we can suspend it until we. <clears throat> okay, right here. Um, would this not be a good place to put that these rules will be reviewed annually? 
Yeah. Yes, it, it'd be a good place to put it. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so look to see if it doesn't say it anywhere else, out. does it? No, I didn't see it anywhere else. <laughs> Putnam did. I read it somewhere that it The legislative it committee will meet annually to review the rules regulating the procedures of the Warren County Legislative Body for modifications or changes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and pick up. You need to pick a moment, and I would do it at any time after the election. So I would say November, October. Well, this is October now. This just started in October, September or October. Started in September. Now, this committee is going to be reelected to or renominated, so that's going to happen in September. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's just say October. Okay. Does that sound good? Is that going to be in addition to Rule 10? Yep. It would just be some extra sentences, yeah. Okay. Do you need that to be restated or anything? Or are you good with that? I believe I got it. Okay. If we meet routinely, like you just suggested, at least yearly, to revise or review or amend the rules, then there's a much better chance that not only we'll have a good set of rules, but that we won't forget for 20 years that we had a set of rules that we worked on and then yeah. we're just kind of thrown to the side, and et cetera, et cetera. Are you saying that we need to have a quarterly meeting or something? Quarterly wouldn't be bad. Probably, but we definitely need to be annually for sure. <laughs> At minimum. Well, and you could just leave in there that, it, that the chairperson... Could or otherwise have specified. a call, or could have a call meeting if, some, if something comes up. Well, a law could change, you know, that affected yeah. the code. And, and then you could just have a call meeting. <clears throat> I don't know that a quarterly meeting is necessary. You, let's you, just say, for, let's just stick with that we'll meet annually, annually um, unless you know required by the commission. Sounds good. More frequent or something yeah. prior to that. Mm -hmm. Prior to that or something. So legislative committee will assemble the second Tuesday of October to discuss any uh, changes and or amendments to or rules. Monday. Oh, was second it Monday? Monday. Second, second Monday. Second Monday. Second Monday. <laughs> <laughs> remember, we're doing it on Mondays, remember? Because Tuesday's busy. Ain't that what we decided? Sounds good. Yep. And, um, you know, you don't have to put in there that you, if something comes up and you need to have a call meeting, all you have to do is call a meeting. Now, you don't have to have it in writing that you can call one. Right. Correct. Correct. And you could actually do that prior to the third Monday if it was something like that, you know, because if you do those, then it doesn't actually cost anything because we don't get paid for those meetings. The ones that are prior. I've been to several of them, like 30 minutes before the county court, the full court meeting, mm -hmm. and you don't get paid for those meetings. Or didn't, so. I didn't know that. I, I, but I guess I didn't know why I didn't. I never thought about that. Because, it didn't matter. But, um, right. Okay. Number 11, rule 11. Robert's Rules of Order. Um, let's just look. It just seems like this is stated, so... Okay. All matters not covered herein shall be governed by Robert's Rules of Order revised as contained in the latest copyrighted edition. If anything comes up and we don't have it covered, you just go to the Robert's Rule, the parliamentarian goes to Robert's Rule of Order, and then you have your answer to your mm -hmm. question. All right. There, the sentence that Putnam County added, <coughs> except 
that Tennessee state law takes precedence over parliamentary procedure. Yeah, that's a good. Yes, yeah. that's, good. that's so a good addition. Add that sentence. Yeah. I think so. Yes. That's on page eighteen, Daniel. Under number rule twenty nine. I don't have a star beside that. You did? <laughs> See, okay. I almost I had one. Um. <clears throat> That's interesting. Okay. <clears throat> Rule 12. That, that, that also says. You know, we've got any rules or rules may be suspended. It says the rules, regulated procedures of the of the uh, board of commissioners may be amended at any regular meeting of the board by a two-thirds vote, provided the amendments were submitted in writing at the previous meeting and considered by the board of commissioners. On Rule 28, on page 18. I don't like that one. I think if this committee's been charged with this, we've got to let's do it. Okay, I just I just bringing that up. I, it, people, gosh, they, they could be doing this every well, meeting. That's you know? correct. Just, they can still make recommendations uh, to us, and then we can debate it, right? Yes, absolutely. Well, anytime anybody brings it up and you get a second for of a motion, it's got to be reviewed, okay, voted on. I mean, they could do that. So that's true, whether we write that in there or not. Yeah, well, you don't have to. That's kind of a, um, you don't have to put it in writing. Okay. Uh, so actually what we're doing on our uh, rule 11 is just mimicking <coughs> what Putman County has, the same language. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, their rule 29 will be our... Uh, Rule 11, or 10, rather. 11. Rule 11. Is it 11? Mm hmm Okay, yeah, 11. You want to do number 12? Doesn't uh, Or y'all need to go? Or, or, or we, uh, we could, but this would also be a good spot to stop. Okay. Uh, twelve is. I think twelve will take a while, but but I'm not opposed to doing it. I just wanted to make. A, I just wanted to that say that. Your homework. Okay. <clears throat> if everybody's okay with stopping here, but let's point out the things that that you're bringing up of concern to number twelve, so we'll have time. Yeah, let's go. To yeah. Prepare. Okay. What 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 points are you thinking that might have some issues with it? That's a question to you. Joseph. Oh yeah, just in general, just us talking about um, speaking from the chair, um, just us talking about the, how the that should be conducted or should not be conducted, and preserving order. Things we 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 have already essentially discussed, but we're going to be discussing them, I think, in more detail here. Um, so, obviously, okay. my concern just comes from. Making sure we're doing that correctly and how we're going to work, specifically number two and three. Well, if we follow yeah. number two the way it's worded, to me it's plain and simple. Uh, Do you not think? All right, well, let's study very. Do your homework for number, rule number 12 and number 13. And, um, okay. 14, 15, and 16, and 17, we ought to be able to get all these done next time because they're, they're pretty cut they're and dry. Not, yeah, they yeah. are cut and dry. 14, 15, 16, and 17 is not going to be a big deal. 12 will, and 13, maybe. I'm going to take some time. Yeah, yeah. One thing that Putnam County has in there, too, we wrap if this we up. all take time and review that section, it's on the parliamentarian, his responsibilities. What page is that on? Um, I, I saw it maybe go, but I don't remember where I flipped it. And we it. don't have, we do not have that in, in here. And I think, I, I would like to just add that section into, into ours. I'll have to go back 
go back and find it. But. And what I'd like to try to do before our next meeting is go ahead and type up a table of contents and then also a review sheet, um, a conflict of interest statement, and add those to ours, okay? And have that ready for us. <coughs> Oh. So that we can, because we'll we'll need we'll need the interest statement for sure, and um, and we need our table of contents, and we also need the, the reviews and addend, addendums when, like on the front page of theirs, when it was adopted, and when any time it was amended. The parliamentary and the conflict of interest, and what else did you say? I can't find. Parliamentarian, but it was find it either, but we can find it in there. And then there was the last ones, um, the last numbers. Um, Here it is. Rule nine. Page six. Six. Page six. There it is. Oh. So that was just election of the parliamentarian. Was there more? Well, it has duties and orientation. Oh, on, on seven. <laughs> yeah, okay. Are you okay with that? All right, now we need to look at our date for our next meeting is going to be. When we last spoke, we said November 12th. That was because some, somebody, some people are going to be out of town. That was me. Okay. Uh, you know, I did say... Yes, because Monday is Veterans Day, correct? The 11th. The 11th, so we're going to go to the 12th. Does that go with everybody? Because Veterans mm -hmm. Day, this bill don't be closed. To my knowledge. Same time, early. Is that on a yeah. Tuesday? It's on a Tuesday, the 12th. Does that go with y'all? Tuesday, the 12th. I don't know why it's not going to be good, but it's probably not going to be good. We'll just have to see. Before we close, um, David, did you have anything you wanted to say? I'll no, just listen, trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> okay. Well, we're glad you joined us this evening. Thank you. And um, there's no other business. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. A second? Second. Nobody else wants to leave. Uh, motion to adjourn. <laughs>